the world we will perceive life from the lens of our lived experiences, it's important to realize that our truth or our reality is the sum total of the things that have passed before. In short, one's view, though true to them, is not necessarily true for the next person and might even be a less complete understanding. There was a viral social media post on the platform formerly known as Twitter the other day, which touched quite a lot of nerves. I shan't be sharing the post directly because I am of the opinion it was either a rage farming exercise where people post easy takes to raise their interactions on social media, or the person simply feeds off the engagement as evidenced by their purposely obtuse responses to people who engaged with the content. The person had been sharing about how they rejected a novel project because they noticed it used the word delve. Because to them, that was an indicator that the proposal had been written by ChatGPT. Outside of the AI correlation, they have a dislike of the word because no one, according to their experience, use that word in spoken English. And the only people who use such words are trying to sound clever. For a bit of background context, the person who made the remark was an American and some people responded in support, adding other mechanical words that were likely an indicator of AI use, such as safeguard, robust, demystify, in this digital world. In this era where there's rampant use and misuse of AI, it's become so hard to distinguish between what was written by a person and what was written by AI. Academic institutions are in so much trouble right now. There are tools which can determine the likelihood of AI having created certain content by trying to analyze linguistic consistency, vocabulary complexity, syntactic patterns, stylistic uniformity and perplexity. But at best, those offer possibility and not a certainty of AI usage, for now at least. You most certainly cannot flag content as AI via a couple of trigger words you believe no human regularly uses. Regular readers of my blog might have noticed I have a certain flair for verbosity in my writing and it consistently predates AI. Who knows, maybe the language learning models trained on datasets they harvested from internet places such as this blog, right? How about that? English is not my first language, and every bit of English I learned was from books, English class, and TV. There are words I struggle to pronounce even at my big age because I read them before I heard them spoken out loud. That story isn't uncommon to me. Zimbabwe was a former British colony. They came, they conquered, and they made us speak like them. I'll spare you the other bits of our colonial heritage. But long story short, we had to learn the English to the detriment of our indigenous languages even. In some circles, one's fluency in English is considered as a measure of intellect and good education. Yep, colonization really did a number on us and we still haven't fully recovered. I can express myself faster and more creatively in English than in my mother tongue which while language is supposed to be dynamic, somehow stopped growing right around the time the colonizers came and has been steadily dying off. How can it not die off when there are no words to describe what has become reality? The advances in tech, AI, the things one sees, hears every day. We need new words. In my blinkered view of the world, 
I used to think that situation is unique to my country, but the whole continent is not without its trauma, which it still hasn't moved past. A large number of my peers across the continent probably have a wider vocabulary than some native English language speakers, not pointing at any continents. End rant. <laughs>